So press on live. Hello, and welcome to Jason Cabinet's Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinet. Here at Cabinet CHR, we're doing a crowdfunding campaign, and it'd be great if you could support by donating or sharing with your network. The link is https slash crowdfunding. Our guest today is Karin Frame. Karin, are you ready to be great today? Yep, I'm I'm ready to rock and roll with you. Karin is passionate about making the world a better place. Karin believes technology holds the key. Karin believes technology holds the key to helping more people discover, buy, and enjoy healthy, eco-friendly products. Like most entrepreneurs, Karin is a is multifaceted and draws on a background in the natural products and data analytics industries while building the Makina community. Not to brag, but she also holds a CP and a law degree. That's more than impressive. So, Karin, um, what's keeping you busy right now? Oh my gosh, Makina, 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 <laughs> and and exercising. I try that's, to exercise. That's a good point. Yep, almost once a day, and. Yes, I need to sleep too. Yeah, there's only 24 hours a day, right? That is correct. And until we learn how to clone ourselves, you know, we got to figure that mess out. Yep, exactly, exactly. But my, you know, my life is pretty consumed with my startup. And um, I do have a husband and I do have a family and I do have friends. Um, And I miss some of my friends tremendously, especially with, you know, the pandemic, but yeah, at least I have something I'm super passionate about that's kept me occupied. Yeah, people don't talk about that when you're an entrepreneur, like, you know, life still goes on, right? You still have to take care of your spouse. You might have kids, friends, you know, all the life still goes on. You know, if you have a house, you still have to cut the grass, wash the dishes, you know, none, <laughs> yeah. none of that stops. That is correct. None of it stops. Washing your clothes, making sure you take a bath <laughs> every once in a while. Yep, exactly. So yesterday you were on Clubhouse doing a, a Clubhouse room. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So um, I founded uh, the Clubhouse room for certified B Corp CEOs. And, you know, it was really interesting. We did a trial run last week and it was a 30 minute run. This time we did 60 minutes and, um, you know, it's going to catch on. But it was really interesting because there were a lot of um, like-minded, mindful kind of people that have built companies from the ground up, or some of them came in a little bit later, and they're all certified B Corp CEOs. So, you know, having the guardrail around business for good and making sure that they keep on track to continue to create businesses for good. So on Clubhouse, you know, Clubhouse is like the hottest app right now. It's a lot of hype. I've been yeah. on this a couple of times. From your point of view, is the hype real? Is it is it giving you ROI like you think it should? I'm like, what's been your, your 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 feedback on that so far? Yeah, that's that's a really great question. Um, you know, I've met people that I would not have met had I not been on Clubhouse. I think it democratizes access even though it is only available on iPhones right now, it does democratize access to a whole host of people that you wouldn't have met. I mean, there's celebrities on there, there's musicians, there are truly, you know, rap stars. Um, There are people like Patty Sanger from uh, Millionaire Matchmaker. Um, And then there are people like Mark Andreessen and uh, Damon Johns from Shark Tank and like a whole host of people. And then, you know, founders of companies like you and me um, that are pitching their companies. There's a ton of learnings. I learn about TikTok on there and I learn about you know, how to grow your Instagram. Um, I met, I meet potential investors on there. Sometimes we get, we get brands that reach out to us because they read about us. So they hear me pitch on clubhouse um, and they want to be part of our community that we're building. Um, So yeah, I think the ROI is great because it costs zero to be on clubhouse, (laughs) but it does cost your time. Um, Financially costs zero time is precious, as you know, as a founder. So um, I try not to get sucked into it because to be on it 
all the time. And I turn off my notifications on my phone because I can't be distracted. I mean, as a founder, you got to get your stuff done. Right. I mean, that's a great hack. I mean, you're an entrepreneur, you definitely got to turn off your like your your notifications unless there's like something like really important you gotta be in contact with, right? And that's right. the best thing I could have done a while ago. And and, and then and then with Clubhouse, there's a lot of great conversations on there, but like any social media platform, whatever it is, I mean, you gotta watch out for being the, the time suck, right? You gotta have some discipline and because you could easily be on, you know, no TikTok or Clubhouse and before you know, man, I've been like six hours. I haven't done nothing, right? <laughs> Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot of, um, a lot of what you get done is about time management. I mean, you know, without Clubhouse, without TikTok, without Instagram, without all of those different social media channels, um, there's a lot to get done in building your business, whether it be raising money. I know you have your, you know, you have your crowdfunding raise going on right now. It's very time consuming, responding to people, making sure the word gets out to managing your customers. In our case, we also have consumers. So making sure everybody on the team is in the right seat at the right place at the right time, right? Um, gosh, there's just so much to do. Making sure you pay your bills, <laughs> you know, making sure, making sure that your customers are happy. I mean, there's just so much you can't get sucked into stuff. No. So what exactly is a certified B corporation? That's a great question. Um, so, so companies apply um, when they feel like they want to be held accountable um, and tra be transparent to all the different stakeholders, their investors, their employees, contractors, vendors, consumers, customers, it doesn't matter, right? And there are certain steps you have to go through to become certified B Corp. You can be an LLC, you can be a C corporation, you could be a partnership, it doesn't matter what kind of organization you have, but you have to meet certain, um, I would say, minimum standards to become certified B Corp. And it's a very rigorous process. You know, they ask you everything from what kind of environmental impact your company has on the planet to how you treat your employees and your contractors to, um, how much, oh gosh, how many vendors you have and, and what the diversity of the vendors are uh, to who owns your organization. And you, once you get certified, that's great. I mean, it's like, we're in great company. I, I think last time I looked there were about 3,600 companies that are certified B Corps um, throughout the world. Some of them are really big names like Ben and Jerry's, which we all love Ben and Jerry's ice cream um, or Danone or Patagonia. But there are a lot of startups like mine. And then there's also some service organizations that have gotten this certified B Corporation status. So um, it's, it's hard, it's rigorous. Um, you have to maintain your certification, obviously. You can get audited. You have to go up for renewals, but you have to be doing business for good. Does that hopefully answer your question? Yes. So let me play devil's advocate. Like all this is fine and good, you know, touchy feely stuff, you know, make the world a better place. But is there a business advantage for doing this? Yeah, I, I, I think it's been proven um, that if, everybody is aligned and you're doing good things in the world, usually there's more profit, you know, with that. You treat people better, you have a better service, you have a better product, you're doing better things for people, so you know. If that's yeah. the case, why come more people don't do the certified B Corp business? There's too much work to do it. It's, it's really hard to get is it? Okay. Your certification. Yeah, yeah. And it does cost money. It's not inexpensive. You know, we were really fortunate because at the very beginning of Nikina, um, even though I didn't apply for it until 2019 and then we got certified in 2020, um, there's a lot of things you have to have in place. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of templates. 
you know, you have to answer a lot of questions. You have to go through a series and series and series and series of questions and verifications and, you know, what did what you put down on paper? Is that really what happened? So they verify everything. It's a lot of work and it's very time consuming. Who's who's the approval? Like who actually approves the process? Um, it's it's a organization, a nonprofit org organization called B Lab, and they're out of I think they're out of Pennsylvania. That's kind of random, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what random. I mean, I'm, yeah, but 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 there are B certified or certified B corporations. They like to say it the right way, throughout the entire world, not just in the United States and Canada. Okay, and then talk about you just a formal partnership. I hope I say this right with the Pet Sustainability Coalition. Or Co yeah, you did. You, I mean, it's yeah, PSC Pet Sustainability. That sounds like a big deal. It is, it's super exciting for us. Um, there are a lot of pet products that um, really don't know how to be more eco-friendly, um, to employ sustainability practices. And so there's an organization and we're super fortunate because we're out of Boulder, Colorado, but um, we're super fortunate that they saw something about Makina because we're, we're just kind of, you know, getting out there and launching and becoming nationwide. And they read about us in 5280 Magazine, which is a, you know, a cool magazine local to Denver, Colorado, and said, oh man, we should see if we can do something with Makina. So, so we started uh, talking with them. They love what we're doing. We love what they're doing. And so we signed paperwork with them. Uh, we have an exclusive relationship and we're going to get as many of their brands on Makina as possible. The ones that are accredited by them that employ these sustainability practices, they'll have their own section on Makina itself. And we're going to help them get discovered by consumers. And hopefully the consumers will love what they're doing. So this next question, unfortunately, some of my ignorance about the natural product industry, but so, and I know this is, this is probably a hard or easy answer, but you, you, McKenna does with natural products. Why in the world would anyone want to put an unnatural product in the body, on their face, in the pet? I mean, is this like, is it because like, you know, there's just so many unnatural products out there with chemicals and unnatural stuff or that's education? Like, I mean, because comments ever say, I'm not going to put something like unnatural on my face or my body, but, but we do it all the time, right? Like Coke, Coke's not natural, right? We drink Coke all the time, you know, so... Well, I don't drink Coke, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, so nat natural is kind of a broad term, right? It's the it's describing the industry, and the industry last year alone in the United States, two there were two hundred fifty two billion dollars of sales, and it's it's really broad. So it could be that a product is um, a plant based product, right? That would be probably considered part of the natural products industry. It could be that something's organic or something is certified non-GMO, or it could be that it's gluten-free. Um, so it's a big industry. It's not just natural, quote unquote. Um, and we're just helping consumers discover brands that and products, the products that they manufacture that match either their dietary requirements. So let's say you have celiac and you shouldn't be eating gluten. We're gonna tell you what has gluten and what doesn't have gluten, right? We're gonna pass that along. Um, or it meets your lifestyle preferences. So, you know, I love animals and I don't wanna buy things that were tested on animals. And so we're trying to open the consumer's eyes to these brands and the products that they manufacture that may be better for you, better for you than something else that you could have bought, better for your family. So again, if you have kids that are lactose intolerant, right? Let's show you what doesn't have lactose in it, right? Or better for the planet. So compostable, employing um, fair trade practices, um, we use recycled packaging 
or the packaging can be recycled. So Makina is kind of all of that. Does that make sense? It does. Makes a lot of sense. And, and so next, and I think this is a very big deal from our point of view. You 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 finished number three on Product Hunt, uh, I think in December. And can you just talk about the like, it, as, as quickly as kind of the process of you know doing a product hunt where product is and, and and the benefit you got of being the number three product that day? Because I think to me, product hunt that's a big deal. Oh, thank you, thank you. So um, we thought we had been on product hunt a while ago, but I didn't know what I was doing. So somebody contacted us. They they saw that we had something sort of cool, and um, or way cool, I guess, right? Um, and so we decided to look into it and they helped guide us. So, you know, it's a, some, some companies and some companies that uh, develop product uh, do a great job with Product Hunt because they, they're skilled in it and they know what they're doing. We had no idea what we were doing. So we just filed, followed a little bit of a guideline. And um, so we we put our product in there. I mean, of course, there's logos and a description and a little video and some slides. But once you launch, you launch. It's kind of like a crowdfunding raise, I was right? About to, that's about to ask you that. How how, 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 was, how was that different yeah. from a crowdfunder? It seems like a lot, a lot of it's the same thing. It, well, but the good thing is, it lasts a day. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not that's a like, very, trust me, I know that's a very good thing. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but you have to be on it. Once you launch your product on product hunt, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to listen to the good and to the bad. And luckily mm -hmm. we didn't have any bad, right? Yeah. People love what we're doing. Um, and, 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 and hopefully you're not launching the same day Tim Cook's doing a Apple product launch. Oh, Lord. I mean, we did, we were, we were on the same day where there were, there was, there's a, there are makers. So I guess technically I'm a maker now on product hunt, but there are makers that this is all they do. They, they sponsor really cool new products and services. You know, it's all technology based, right? On product hunt. And they know how to run a product hunt, quote unquote, campaign and get get the product in front of folks that are going to be upvoting it. It's like you can, they can, people can upvote your product and they can also, when they find your product or they look at your video and look at your slides and read your description, they can write comments. And it's really important that you and your team are on it. And I think there's some sort of algorithm behind it. It's just not, it's not just the number of upvotes that gets you to the top of the product hunt list for that day. It's also the comments, the responses to comments, whether or not people rate you five stars or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got some five stars, but, yeah. and we, we we did have a five star on there or we do have a five, but I don't even know how that was done because I couldn't, I couldn't find it anywhere, <laughs> which was super weird. But yeah, yeah so we responded. Um, I. I haven't really been, I've looked at product hunt since, obviously, but as you know, being a founder, you just have so much stuff to do all the time. So I I had I've I supported a couple of friends that launched on product hunt, but I haven't been really back. Okay. So. That's, that's Thank fine. you though. Yay. Yeah. Thanks for recognizing that. That yes. was it was a big deal. We could brag about it. Yes, you should, brag, you should brag about it. Yeah. Um, so in your previous life, you were an attorney and a CPA, which why anyone who want to do that to themselves have no idea. <laughs> but can you talk about how that previous yeah. life experience of being an attorney and CPA has helped you as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. So so I think it's the the rigor of going through law school taught me a lot about just getting through stuff, even though it's painful. Same with getting my degree in accounting and taking the CPA exam was painful. Um, it's a little masochistic or whatever the phrase is, but um, you know, I love having that satisfaction of accomplishing something and getting through the problems that are literally thrown your way every single day. You may have like 
one problem that day, you may be lucky and have zero problems that day that you need to solve for your organization, but you may have 20. And I think that I know that law school actually helped me learn how to solve problems. So that was, that was great. Um, you know, I also think that um, just, just having the knowledge of the law has been helpful. There are contracts that need to be drafted for the organization. There's um, all sorts of things, contractors, employees, all of it is pretty much law related mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Um, and then having my background, my very early education in accounting, I understand what a balance sheet is. I know what a cash flow statement that's, that's is. That's kind of important, right? Yeah, it's super important when you're running a business. You understand budgets. I mean, there are a lot of things that I learned in business school. And I went to a great business school. I went to Indiana University and got my degree in accounting there, but it was part of the business school. So I had to take sales and marketing and production and operations. And we had a, um, we had a core and B core. B core is you have a case study. So you work with a team. So it wasn't just, and, and things are different now. You know, I am um, in my 50s, so classes are different now and, um, you know, way people are taught now. I mean, everybody's pretty much learning online, but um, it wasn't that way then. And it's all about collaboration as well. So both undergrad and law school helped me tremendously with all of that. But there are a lot of really great entrepreneurs like Bill Gates um mark zuckerberg i mean they you know they founded incredible companies whether whether you or not you like bill gates or whether or not you like mark mark zuckerberg i mean they didn't really have a formal education to a certain extent i did and getting through it was a sense of accomplishment knowing that i could do it you know some people don't need that but i did so current I think you've done a great job of putting your stuff out there. Like, you know, like um, you've been, you know, you've been accepted to and compete like a lot of pitch programs, pitch competitions. You've won a lot of them, you've been a second or third. Well, two part question. Why do pitch competitions? Why put yourself out there over and over again? And, and are you actually getting anything out of it? Man. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it's hard. My, even when I get onto clubhouse, I was selected, like if you're selected to pitch, do your 60 second pitch, all of a sudden my heart starts beating super quickly. I, I have no idea where that comes from. Um, same thing with pitch competitions or getting into an accelerator or applying for this or applying for that. You have to get the word out about what you're doing and you can't be shy about it, honestly. You could be heads down and work really hard on it, but at some point, you're gonna to have to pop your head out of the sand because you need customers. And in our case, we're building a really a big community. We're talking about everybody across the United States and Canada, because we just launched in Canada yesterday. So we're, we're building this big community of consumers who really want to do better with their dollar. And uh, you gotta tell people and you gotta get feedback. That's the other thing. The, all of these pitch competitions, every single time that I talk about Makina with a potential investor or a partner or a brand or a consumer, you know, we're getting feedback. We're making it better every single time. I have learned so much from getting out there and talking with other folks. I've also gotten team members you know, they got super excited about what I was doing. Um, you also just get to show your own personality. And uh, one of the things that I found is super important is that when you're working with, you could have something super great, but if somebody doesn't like you, you're not gonna have a successful relationship. That's so you gotta true. be there, right? You gotta show who you are and, and just, be as transparent as you can be. So, so you how, how you deal with this? Like, you know, you're at a pitch competition or you're doing whatever, you know, people give you positive feedback, of course, but then you get feedback that's not so positive, right? And like, you know, it's kind of negative and, 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 and you can kind of tell that it's not really coming from a good place. And people will say, don't take it personally, right? But you're like, well, how can I not take this person? Like, this is my life, this is my company, this is my baby. How yeah. do you advise people to deal with those situations? 
Oh man. Um, it is hard. You have to develop a thick skin. No question. I mean, you, you, you understand. I mean, you've been in the military. I mean, you know, the service that you've given to this country, veterans get criticized. It's ridiculous. You, you just, you can't win sometimes in that, but you have to have faith in what you're doing and that you're doing it the right way or trying to do it the right way, that you're doing your best. Um, you have to have a positive attitude. You have to kind of let things kind of roll off your shoulders, you know, take in what you need to take in because sometimes people have really good thoughts that, you know, yes, it may be coming from a bad place, but sometimes they're right. You know, we've had some really interesting um, feedback from potential investors and from brands and from consumers. Um, not everybody's going to be happy 100% of the time, right? But you got to put yourself out there in order to learn and grow and thrive. So can you talk more about building a community around your company? Like I have to imagine that's a, a heavy undertaking, you know, I mean, building a community is not easy. And if you, if you just want to do like your small local community, right. Of like Boulder and Denver, Colorado, but you're doing it in two nations. Can you talk about how you're doing this? Like the, some processes and steps you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're, you know, we have great partners, you know, the pet sustainability coalition is, you know, a fabulous partner. These are, um, companies that have been founded by people who are passionate about pets and the environment and sustainability, and they're going to get the word out, right? We're, I mean, we soft launched in Canada yesterday, but we have partners already lined up to work with us to get the word out about Makina. So there's a publication up there. I won't talk about, you know, who it is yet. Um, I'll let them, you know, we'll have a press release about it, hopefully maybe early next month. Um, but yeah, they, they already have this community and we're just going to add to that community and make it even bigger. And in our case, it's not just, I mean, we have a lot of partners. We have a bunch of brands. They already have a ton of people who love their products, like, um, for example, Pipcorn or, um, you know, they were on Shark Tank. So the word in Barbara Corcoran is an investor in them. So you take all of those brands that we have, and we have well over a hundred now, and you take all of their fans, they become Makina fans. They start using Makina and it grows and it grows and it grows. But we have brands, we have retailers, we have consumers, we have influencers, we have nonprofits. You know, we're trying to make the world a better place. Remember, we give back to No Kid Hungry, Feeding America, One Warm Coat, Equal Justice Initiative. I mean, we have a lot of organizations that we partner with. And so you're, you're just building this incredible organism and hopefully it's organic as much as possible. We don't, you know, we just started um, running Google ads Honestly, we hadn't done any paid advertising before this. So it's going to be an interesting year for us um, and getting the word out about McKenna. But we had, a, we had to make sure we had a really great product market fit. And maybe not everybody knows what product market fit is on, you know, that's listening to this. But we had to make sure that, you know, we had things, nothing's going to be perfect. I remember when LinkedIn used to crash on me. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, there's still bugs at clubhouse. There's b bugs. It's super cool. It's valued at multi-billion dollars now. I don't even know what the valuation is, but, but it's going to crash. Things are going to break. And, um, but you got to get it to a point where you feel comfortable about where you're heading. Um, and that the community is going to be supportive of it because they're going to want it and they're going to forgive it. Right. Yeah, I think it was crazy about Clubhouse, like a almost a billion dollar valuation. I think they only had like 13 people working for them still, which is like, you know, just crazy. So totally crazy. Karin, both of us are founders in our 50s, right? And no, we're not the stereotypical, you know, founder out of Stanford, 20 years old, you know. Has being, you know, at our age level been an advantage or disadvantage for you? Um, 
That's a really good question. God, you asked these great questions, Jason. Um, you know, I think that both you and I have a lot of great and hard life experiences that can um, help us create really valuable companies that provide services to folks that really need it. And I think it's that mixture of all the experiences that we've had in life that makes our companies stronger. There are some incredible founders now in their 50s. I mean, the woman that founded The Real Real, I think, um, there's just, I, I should probably know them all by heart. I don't really focus on age though. And I really focus on like, how cool is that? Is this making a difference in my life? Is it helping my business? Because I know that your business is more, <coughs> excuse me, HR related. Does it, does it create value to my constituents? And I think that the, the seasoning, I want to say, of a person <laughs> and the well-roundedness of the person and the ability to listen, the ability to be Flexible, but not so malleable <laughs> is important. And, and the fact that you have all these people around you that have loved you for years is also really, really important to create a big, you know, a, a great company. It doesn't have to be super big, but a great company. So, you know, I think it's an advantage, honestly. And it's all truly a frame of mind, no pun intended. You know, how you look at things. I, I have a very, very young attitude. I mean, you can see from behind me, I, I love fun architecture. I just love fun things. I have a very positive attitude about life. You know, even when something throws a little bit of a wrinkle at you. I mean, I had cancer last year, you know? And I think I've become stronger as a result of it. I've had people in my life that I've been super close with, like my dad and my brother die. You know, my stepmom has MS. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard, hard road and you gotta be able to, you know, look at those challenges head on and go around them, under them, through them, over them, whatever it may be. So, Karen, so your company, there's a tech piece, you know, tech has its own world that people operate in the world of tech. You have a natural product, so I'm assuming that's a, a whole different world, right? How are you combining the worlds of tech and natural products and, like, make this company work? Yeah, well, so, um, you know, we saw a need for consumers to be able to make better choices with their wallet, right, and get incentivized to buy these, these products that are making a little bit of a difference in the world. They could be B certified, like I said, organic, non-GMO, fair trade, whatnot. And um, so, so we are truly a discovery and data and insights platform. So we've combined the two because we know, and there was a gap in the marketplace. We know that these brands that are doing better things in the world need to be discovered. So they get buried in a myriad of Instagram ads, TikTok ads, um, Amazon on the shelf. You know, there may be 10 products that are gluten-free bread and, or, or just bread and you don't know the difference. So Makina is supposed to help and it does help because we've gotten a lot of feedback from consumers about this, helps those consumers navigate, you know, what it, what may be, better for them because of their dietary requirements or their lifestyle needs. And so just that combination has been incredible. Um, it is not an easy business to build. I'll just leave it at that, you know, cause we're, we're talking, it's not a, it's not a true marketplace. It's a hub because we don't sell product. We get brands that partner with us, come on our platform and they're selling their product. And they're telling the consumer where they can buy the product. And then they're the ones that are incentivizing them. They're actually paying for the cash back offers and rewards. So 
you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's hard, but we feel like we're doing the right thing. Our shoppers are coming back 63% of the time and buying from a brand at least twice or more 63% of the time. So we know it's working and we've collected hundreds of thousands of receipts from all over the United States, everything from a Walgreens to a CVS to a Walmart to a Kroger to a farmer's market to a local store to a Circle K um, to a Thrive Market. So it could be anywhere. And, um, and over 30, 32,000 points of sale. So we're making it happen. We're totally making it happen. It's just, it's been a long road. Yeah, so a quick history story about like consumer education, right? So back in 2019, the whole 2019, I was a vegan. Yeah, I just as a channel to myself, right? Oh, and wow. maybe like it was like February or March. So I was I was eating like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. My daughter looked at me and said, "Oh, you're a vegan? Are you a vegan?" He said, "Yeah, yeah. No, you're not. What do you mean I'm not? Your your bread has milk in it. Like bread don't have milk in it. What are you talking about? I looked <laughs> at the ingredients. It was like some kind of like dairy milk processing thing in there, right? And I had no clue that bread had milk in it, right? Just yeah, mm-hmm. but, but but who knew? Right, right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things that you know, Makina has on its platform. So if you're looking at a product, we have a list of ingredients. So you can see, you know, what is in it and you can make a choice. I mean, we're not, we're not selling anything. It's, we're really putting the power back in your hands as a consumer, making it easier for you to figure out really what you're, what you're putting in or on your body. If that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. So when you talk about data analytics and data analytics, is this like about the part of the algorithm that you have that helps, you know, do all the kind of, you know, tech stuff, so to speak. Yeah. So we, we, we built um, an interesting platform. It's all native. Um, You know, we do use some other technologies to like for the communications piece directly with the consumer because brands can talk directly with the consumer through our app. Um, But we built it all natively and um, we, collect and we do use algorithms we collect information from as i said from the consumer himself or herself it could be surveys or polls or watching a video or looking at a recipe or um, sharing with friends or just buying product and getting cash back we've also gamified the app a little bit as well so all of that is fed real time into a dashboard for the brand to figure out again who their consumer is, where they're shopping, what's in their basket, what kind of feedback is the consumer giving them um, about their product? Does it taste like crud or is it delicious? I mean, do they like the packaging? Do they not? And and so Makina's kind of combined all that into one really nice package for a brand. And it's everything from, as I said, um, you know, feedback. And then we've combined in, like we have this email list that um, of consumers, it used to be like 1.2 million consumers. Um, We've we've scrubbed it several, several times over, but it's about half a million consumers right now. We have a really cool uh, Makina mix that we send out. People get matched. Um, Oops. So it's a a box of, uh, natural products that goes out to consumers. And it's just based on what you answer in the survey, but you get a free box, costs you nothing except answering questions. Um, So we, you know, we've, we've worked really hard at, you know, again, creating a community, providing real value to our customers right now, which are brands, Um, everything from the Makina mix to the data and insights that they get about you know, the consumer competition, uh, trade spend, there's a lot of things that goes into it. And we've been really, we've worked really hard on it. <laughs> As you know, it's really hard to do this stuff. So what is your process for verifying or making sure a product is actual natural? Yeah, great question. So we have a qualification sheet. Uh, the brand has to have something. And I have been in the industry since 1994. Again, kind of showing my age, my experience. Um, and this is how I shop. This is how I live. Um, 
you know, I, I, um, you know, I buy beauty products that don't have um, toxins in them as much as possible. I, um, I make sure that the toilet paper that we buy, well, it may not be recyclable all the time, but at least it's biodegradable. Uh, we know that the hand soap that we buy doesn't have the types of uh, bad ingredients in it that cause lots of problems or they're it's free from fit fragrance because sometimes you know you may be allergic to fragrances so we the, the qualification sheet that we have is that a brand has to at least have uh distribution across the us and now of course if they want to go into canada canada's fine or uh, companies only in canada um so they have to have wide distribution they could be a D2C site, so they could have their own Shopify site. Um, we do make sure that it's got at least several attributes so that it's gluten-free or non-GMO or organic. Doesn't have to have all of them, just can have three to five to 20. Um, and that it would be considered a brand that would be normally part of the natural products industry. Now there are toys that we've talked to that are educational toys, uh, don't uh, utilize any toxins in, in creating them. So those toys are coming on board as well. So it's not just food and beverage and pet and household goods and beauty and supplements and clothing, it's toys and it's more. So it's kind of a big, big world that we play in, but we're trying to, as I said, take the power of the dollar that the consumer spends and put it toward brands that are either better for them, better for their family or better for the planet. And what's the product gets on your app? You, you, you had like audit them like once a year or every two years after that to make sure they're still doing what they said they're going to do? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Are they still in the store? Are they still doing what they said they're going to do? Are it, they still certified B Corp? Are they still, you know, non-GMO verified? Um, we do. We take a look, a quick look. Um, as we grow, it's going to, it will have standards in place. And, and we've been approached by some really interesting standards companies that would love to partner with us. And, and we're probably going to do that and have them take over some of that auditing. For the name of your company, how do you come up with your name of your company? And does it, is it just a random name or does it actually mean something? It actually means something. It, it does seem random, but it's stuck and it was available to be trademarked. So those are two good things. So Mikina means happiness in Swahili. It means abundance in Hawaiian and it means machine in Arabic. So essentially we're a happy abundant machine. Um, it was unique. I mean, now there are some other Makinas and you know, it could be a girl's name or a guy's name, um, but that's essentially why we chose it. It was memorable. Um, it meant something, it means something to the company and it more likely means something a lot to me at this point. I'm sure it does. So you've already talked some about your company but can you talk in more detail about, you know, how the company got started, you know, the idea for the company, what's going on with it right now? What is your vision for the company moving forward? Yeah, great question. Um, so I'll talk about how it got started. I mean, there are lots of things in my life that um, drove me to create Makina, to build Makina. Everything from growing up in central Illinois, across the street from a cornfield that was sprayed with pesticides every year to my dad being a science professor and learning how to code when I was really young, to writing a book in second grade about what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to feed all the starving children in Africa, to marrying my first husband who had been an organic farmer, to me teaching at the University of Colorado in the entrepreneurship program, listening to a colleague talk about exchanging textbooks with a mobile device and saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to take my first company and pivot it. I hate the word pivot, iterate, iterate. Now we are not helping the consumer navigate the natural products retail environment. Let's help them navigate the natural products brands that can be bought anywhere. 
So we're meeting the consumer where the consumer likes to shop. So um, all of those things have created Makina, along with just like you asked me earlier, being a lawyer, have, getting my CPA, earning my CPA um, certificate. That sounds a little redundant. Um, all of that has like led me and drove me to create the company. So my big vision for Makina is pretty big. Uh, we got a grant, we won a grant or awarded a grant by the state of Colorado to go to the Mobile World Congress in 2019, one of five companies in Colorado. And when I was there, we, we were in the booth and there were at least 30 to 35 people from all different countries throughout the world who loved what we were doing. So my big vision is to take Makina global, period. Let's put, again, the power of the dollar in the hand of the consumer. They can make the choices. So hopefully those, um, those brands that aren't doing such great things to our environment are, you know, not making quite as much money, you know? Maybe they decide to make some changes to how they're doing things. And, you know, my vision again is creating really big impact in the lives of people, helping them lead healthier lives, truly on a cleaner planet. Under that's the a, water, over the water, I could go on and on. That's a lofty goal, that's good. That yeah, That's one thing about entrepreneurs is about, like, you know, making big time changes and solving problems and making the world a better place, I think. And you're definitely doing that. Thank you, thank you, we're so, trying. So, One you know, as, at a time. <laughs> so as, as an opportunity, you know, you have a lot of your plate, you're doing a lot of things, you know, how, like, you know, and of course you might have a thousand things to do. You gotta, you know, focus on what's important. How do you like prioritize and stay organized? Like you just, you have some kind of calendar, some kind of tool oh internally, or you, are you just waking the day and just wing it and like, and just go for it? <laughs> I have lists after lists after lists that I write and rewrite and rewrite again every single day you know, cross things off and go to the next thing. Sometimes lists will shift, you know, in priority. Sometimes somebody else's this is your this, or somebody, or your their this is your this. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so you have to make judgments like literally almost every hour about what you're going to focus on. But I do always have on my desk, also on my computer, also on my phone, you know, my lists. And sometimes it may be just on a memo. Sometimes it may be just on my calendar um, to remind me, oh yeah, I got to do that. Oh, I got to do that. Or I got to do that. Um, you know, I, I usually move tasks when they're on my calendar um, or an email, if it's something I have to come back to and I can't do it then because you got to stay focused as much as you can over to the right side of my calendar. And now it's a task that I got to check at some point. I've used different programs in the past, like um, Evernote. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, uh, oh gosh. Now I, now I can't think of any of them because I don't use those on a regular basis. I think what works for me may not work for other people. Remember, I'm in my 50s. Um, and I remember this thing called a pen or a pencil and I like paper. I like to write things down and then cross them off and get some sense of accomplishment. Um, but you know, I also have notebooks and this, I don't know if this is going to show up backwards, right? I have inspirational notebooks that I use and it's just filled. It's just, it's lined. It's filled with stuff. I used to use Stephen Covey you know, his notebooks for things. And I just found that things like this work just as well for me. Sometimes I have a hard time finding my notes again. <laughs> I've dated it. I'm like, oh, what was that conversation? And I'll have to go through everything. But I have books and books and books filled of that. Sometimes I use loose leaf uh, paper. Sometimes I use post-its. If it's really important, I put post-it on my computer. I'm like, okay, I got to apply for that. I got to apply <laughs> for that and apply for that. Yeah. So, so I, I, I how you deal with this, right? And that's, I'm going to make this number up. Suppose you have a list of like 20 or 20 things, right? But you can only do like three things a day. 
And uh -huh. the stuff that's on the list, like it's been like number 15 forever, right? You always look at like, like I need to do this, but it's not important now. Months later, it's still number 15 on your list. You haven't done like, man, I got to do this, but it's only number 15. I can't, I can't, you know, justify spending time right now. How do you like keep from going like batshit crazy? You know, this thing's been on your list all this time. You just like, man, I, I, I haven't done it six months. I'll never do it. Let me take off the list. Or like, you just try to like, delegate to someone else. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good question. You should ask my team about that. So we've been doing, we use the book Traction by Gino Wickman and I have, we have a weekly meeting, it's called an L10 with my team uh, that's 90 minutes long. It's the same time, same day, every single week. And on that <laughs> L10, which is kind of the format that we, that we use, there's, there are two do's that are associated with rocks that you set. There are the big annual rocks and then there's quarterly rocks. And then there's of course, three-year goals and five-year goals, right? And there are some things on that list that I am embarrassed to say have been my to-dos that are still on that list. And you know, at some point when we have more people on the team, or I get an administrative assistant or a number, not, not Rick, not my number two guy, but somebody is truly an administrative assistant that can help me get through some of that stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to them, but I gotta keep it on the list. If I don't keep it on the list, it's truly gonna get lost. Yes. So I understand you have something, something for our listeners today. Oh yeah, 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 I do. Please download the app. Um, it's, you know, on the app store, it's M-A-K-E-E-N-A. -E -E it's on Google Play, same thing, M-A-K-E-E-N-A. -E -E and I'm gonna give you a code. And if you put the code in when you sign up, you gotta do it when you sign up. Um, it's M-J-W-E-M-C. So M-J-W-E-M-C. If you put it in, we're gonna give you a $5 bonus that will go into your account to do the cash out, you know, when you get to the 20 bucks, you can cash out through PayPal or Venmo, but it will give you five bucks after you redeem your first brand offer. So it's gotta be a brand offer like a Pipcorn or a Mikey's or, um, oh gosh, Mr. Lee's or Melt Organic. So after you go to the store and buy it, or you have something sent to you, you bought it, you scan that UPC, you take a snapshot of the receipt. If you have put in that code at the very beginning, when you sign up for Makina, we'll put in extra five bucks in your account. Thank you for that. And then yeah. can you share your social media for yourself and your company so people can reach out to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can be found on LinkedIn. It's, uh, I think I actually use my maiden as my middle name. It's Karen Shoresman, like seashore man frame and LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn, just connect with me there. Um, or just follow us on Instagram, which is at go.makina. Twitter is at go.makina. Pinterest is go.makina. Most of them are go.makina. We have a TikTok um, account now and we're doing the Makina Macarena. So let me know if you'd like to participate and I'll send you a free, the Makina app for good beanie and you can play along with us, but that is at Makina.app, A-P-P. So we'd love to connect with you, however. And then of course, Facebook. Facebook is, I, Facebook's, sorry, Facebook. Facebook's a little weird. For some reason, we didn't get Makina or Go Makina. We got Makina Co, C-O, but you can find it if you just do Makina. So lots of different ways to connect. You know, direct message me on um, Instagram if you want. Message me on LinkedIn. Go to our website. Go to makina.com website and just fill out um, an information, you know, that we ask for, which is really just your name and why you want to talk with us. And I'll get it. You know, somebody will send it to me if you want to talk to me about Makina, an opportunity working with us. If you, you know, want to spread the word, if you're an influencer, if you're a brand, there's a brand uh, login page, not login page, but a brand page. If you want to sign up for a demo as a brand, just go to makina.com forward slash brands hyphen join us 
and you'll be taken to a brand landing page and you can learn a little bit more about Makina. You can look at some other testimonials from other brands and you can sign up for a demo. Yeah. So you definitely went to full sales mode right there. That's a, that's <laughs> impressive sales pitch right there. I like that. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for letting me do that. I don't get to do that very often. Yes. And for our listeners, we'll have the, the link to our gifts and our social media on our show notes. You can find our show notes at www.cabinetshlblog.com. And don't forget to support our crowdfunding campaign by donating or sharing at HTTPS, cabinetshr.co slash crowdfunding. So we're coming to the end of our talk. And thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Can you give us any advice or wisdom or anything you want to talk about? Oh, gosh. Um, I would just say if you are really passionate about solving a problem that you, you know, and actually it should be pretty personal because you're going to live with whatever you're solving for a really long time. I would say go for it, you know, test it out, talk to potential customers, talk to your friends, talk to your family, but I would just say go for it and surround yourself with really smart, supportive people. Karen, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Super great to like have this conversation. Great to know you better. And thank you so much for having me. And to our listeners, thank you for your time as well. And remember to be great every day.